The hands-on throttle and stick, or HOTUS, has become the absolute staple of space sims and flight sims. There's a really wide range available now, and it really does cater for all budgets. Entry-level devices can be found for around $150, and for the enthusiast, there are very high-end devices from companies like Verpal Controls, where a HOTUS can cost well over $800. This is more than some people would spend on a laptop. But a lot of these new designs lean very heavily on the Thrustmaster Warthog, a HOTAS replica based on the plane of the same name. They borrow the same connection from the base and the flight stick, as well as the locking collar. The Warthog was released some 10 years ago. How does it stack up against today's competition? Is it worth your hard-earned cash, or should you go for one of the competitors? So like Thrustmaster's pendular pedals, this thing is 100% metal. It's the only HOTUS that can make that claim. There is a real heft and bulk, both to the throttle and the joystick. And moving up from something like the X52 or X56, you're instantly going to notice the quality difference. It has a characteristic coolness to the touch, and there is no doubt in your mind when you're handling this thing that you're using a very high quality product indeed. They certainly haven't skimped on the quality for the buttons either. They have far more resistance than any other device I've used, including the Verpal devices, and the buttons require significantly more pressure than I'm used to having to apply. These switches, I suspect, will be good for many, many cycles of presses and will last for many years indeed. They have a deeply satisfying click and it feels like the genuine thing, not a PC peripheral. There's a few less switches on the throttle than I would like, and all the other throttles that I've used have opted for momentary press switches. These are all latching toggle switches, including some of the two-way hats, which felt like a bit of an odd choice. So when you push the switch, it latches into position, whereas on something like the X56, you press those toggle switches and they spring back. Um, and no doubt that's because they've based the design on the real Warthog throttle, but most sim games expect a momentary second of input, where these latching switches typically provide continuous input. That made it quite difficult, actually, to get the controls set up in Elite Dangerous, and Elite Dangerous, out of the box, has got a default profile for the Warthog HOTAS, um, but it, I found myself double flipping the switch to get the gear to go down or to get the cargo scoop to deploy. It does have the capability of recognising button holds, which is effectively what a latching switch is doing. But all I found is this kind of reversed the order in which I had to flip the switches, but I ended up moving them as many times. The other thing, of course, is if you've got, like you have on the X56, um, switches that, that you can push up and push down and spring back, you've effectively halved the number of assignments that you can put against these switches in comparison. Typically, latching switches can do one thing and it's either on or off, so the gear is either up or, or it's down. I thought I'd have uh, better luck in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, but I found very similar problems here. I couldn't get the flaps in the Beechcraft Baron, to behave correctly, they either went all of the way down or all of the way up. The flap lever on the Warthog has three positions. You would assume the highest position would be the flaps up, the middle position would be one notch in, and um, the third position would be full flaps down. But I found I could only make them either go all the way up or all the way down. And I'm, I'm sure that these are problems that you can solve. I mean, a quick googling of the problem showed just how deeply these problems ran. A whole load of recommendations in forums of using third-party software, as an example. Um, some people even outright modifying the device. And for something that's made by a company like Thrustmaster, I would expect this largely to work 
straight out of the box. Ultimately, there's a mismatch between the way that the game wants to receive the input and the input that these latching switches is providing. And then there is the notorious slew control. This is typically something that fighter pilots use to control a, a cursor on their multifunctional display to select targets. Again, I think that they have based this on the design of the actual throttle out of the actual Warthog aircraft. It's far too small. It's very fiddly to use. It doesn't it doesn't feel like it fits around all of the other very chunky, very high quality switches. And again, I found lots of examples of people modifying their device to put thumbsticks in, which are far easier to use. I think the flight stick itself is the standout star of this device. It feels way better than any other flight sticks I've tried, and I do include the Verbal Controls one, in that it reminds me of being a kid and being in aircraft museums and sitting in the cockpit and grabbing the flight stick. You know, it's got that very high quality uh, feeling that you can't replicate even through the best quality plastic. This thing is solid metal. It's got a nice cool touch. It feels um, really, really robustly made. The buttons again on here are all excellent. The craftsmanship is every bit as good as on the throttle. It has a quite hefty amount of resistance while you move the joystick around and it has quite a noticeable detent in the center position and as you're moving the joystick around and you pass through the center position, trust me, you'll be under no mistake that you've done that. And unfortunately, the high resistance and this tendency to want to self-center very, very, very strongly makes putting in small, finite, granular control close to the center position quite difficult to do. As you move the joystick further out around the device, actually it's quite easy to control, but when you're close to that center position, it's difficult to make small adjustments. It didn't require any calibration at all. It worked as soon as I plugged it in. Uh, the base, like the throttles, are very, very sturdy. There's absolutely no risk of either of these lifting up off the table, which is a problem that I've had, certainly with the lighter, more plastic devices, such as the X52 and the X56. But ultimately, I think it's let down by the ball and socket mounting between the base and the stick. At this kind of price point, I would have liked to have seen uh, something slightly more, um, slightly more elaborate, slightly more well engineered, and it's certainly a weak point on the device. Again, if you crawl through the forums, you can see lots and lots of people uh, complaining about uh, this particular part of the device failing. It appears to be the most common failure point. I suspect there is a bit of maintenance required, a bit of lubrication that needs to be applied to this uh, from time to time, which I would. Um, bet my bottom dollar that people are not doing. Uh, the absence of a twist on the joystick, and again, my same caveat, this is based, this is a replica of the actual Warthog aircraft HOTAS, um, but I have such well-established muscle memory for twisting the stick for yaw that I found myself doing this subconsciously despite having um, assigned um, one of the hats to do the rudder control. Now, if you go for this HOTAS, you will almost certainly need pedals to go with it. You cannot get the kind of granular control that you can get on an analog device with a switch. You just couldn't actually yaw the aircraft or the, or the spacecraft um, delicately. It was always a sort of swinging wildly backwards and forwards affair. But I would ultimately say that I actually found in extended play sessions that I actually started to fatigue a bit with this device and it's a combination of just just how hard you have to push on the switches to get them to actuate, the resistance that you get from the flight stick itself, the actual throttle mechanism itself is not too bad, um, but I just found myself missing the lightness and the finesse of the Verpool device. The throttle includes a detent system, which is a nice addition to see. Out of the box, it has an idle detent to stop you from accidentally idling your aircraft, which is a very, very, very bad thing to do in a jet when you're in the air. And it includes a afterburner detent, which by default 
isn't set up to work as a detent, but all you need is a hex key to make a very simple adjustment and you can add this in as well. You use the detents by lifting up the entire handle to move them backwards and forwards and I found um, that this worked pretty well actually. Now let's talk about the price and I am sorry to say as it stands today this is yet another device that is falling foul of uh, Covid created inflation. It was retailing very consistently for many years on Amazon at the $450 mark. At the time of making this video, it's retailing at more than $650, which is starting to approach the cost around the $800 mark for the Verpool devices. Availability as well as inflation is a real challenge for this device. You invariably can't find the full kit with the throttle and the stick in it. So if you buy those separately, that then loads in more cost yet again. This HOTAS was a landmark device when it launched 10 years ago. There is no doubt of that. And the Verpal Controls products feel derivative and iterative of this product. But frankly, it's starting to show its age a little bit. There are far too many niggly problems. And if this was less than half the price of the Verpool device and you were a diehard flight simmer, and I think that's who this is targeted at, those that want to do something like DCS World, they want their flight stick to match exactly what they're looking at, either on their monitor or in VR, very handy in VR so that you can look down and see what you're doing. Um, if, if you fit into that market and you can get this device at the $450 mark, I think it's a great product. But at $650 plus, particularly for those that are more casual gamers or those that try a different variety and different genres of game, if you're moving backwards and forwards from flight sims to space sims and I don't think ultimately this device is particularly well suited to space sims because of the lack of a twist on the flight stick and these latching um, toggle switches just not playing nicely with those games. There are cheaper and easier devices to set up and if you're in the very high end I would encourage you to find the money, save up and, and go for the Verpal device. You've got a longer lead time on that. You, you can be waiting six, seven, eight weeks because they manufacture these things uh, to order. But the Verpal controls devices don't seem to have seen that inflationary cost drift up. So I think ultimately Thrustmaster need to iterate their design. I think they've tended too much towards the accuracy of making it a replica and that form over function has made it a little bit clunky uh, and difficult to do. Um, the stick is the standout part for me. You can attach this to a Verpal Controls setup. It uses exactly the same locking collar and mounting mechanism. And if you can find the extra money and you still want that realism, combining that metal flight stick with the really quite well engineered and realistic base eliminating the weak point of that, that ball and socket and replacing that with a properly engineered solution from Verpal Controls, that's going to be the absolute most realistic uh, choice that you can go for. So I'm going to award this three out of five stars. I debated on whether to give it two because I did find it quite a frustrating device, but it is, it is a landmark HOTAS. It does need iterating, um, but... I think for the current selling price, there are better choices that can be made. So there we go, guys. As always, I hope you're very well wherever in the world you are. Stay safe in the skies. I'll see you in my next one.